Google Maps is a great tool, but it doesn't always give you the best results. A good example of this is when we were going to the mountains to a Pueblo Mágico called Quetzcoalan. The first time that we knew that we were in trouble was when we turned onto an unpaved road. Several miles down into this route, we knew we were in trouble again when we found the Tucoluta River. The rains had swelled the river and we were in a very small car. We waited several minutes at the river not knowing what to do, but we decided that we had to go back. Luckily, we found another route. It was longer, it wasn't on Google Maps, but we did make it. Welcome to Quetzalcan, um, the, another Pueblo Magico here in the state of Puebla. So come along for this adventure, I hope you enjoy it. The last time having to cross the Tetlupla River, it almost took us down, downtown. We're now in the town of Tusamapan. We've been going through lots of little towns with lots of little churches and stuff along the way. We made it to the very cloudy Quetzcoalan city, which is the Pueblo Magico here. If you haven't heard of Quetzalan, I wouldn't be surprised. Quetzalan is located in the state of Puebla, right on the border with the state of Veracruz. It was named a Puebla Magico in 2002 and is actually a very old city. It was founded by the Spanish in 1547, but there is evidence of native culture that is much older than that. We stayed in Hotel Posada Quetzalan. It was $40 a night and right in the middle of the town. There's parking, two beds, bathroom, everything looks good. Quetzalan is known for its cobblestone roads and many handicrafts. It is a town set on a mountain, so expect to walk up and down hills a lot. We are walking through the market right now towards the church. Mostly just a food market, but you can hear the clang of the church bells here. Ooh, machete. These are what they use to cut the leaves down here. You can buy the cool um, cheese for them as well. The first church that we visited was called the Santuario de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, but all the locals call it La Iglesia de los Jarritos, which means the Church of the Little Jars. And it's called this way because clay jars are prominently featured in the decorations of both the cemetery and the church building itself. Mexican cemeteries are very interesting because they bury they're dead above ground usually, or in very shallow graves like you can see here. These graves were being prepared for the Day of the Dead, which is a family event where people come to the graveyards and they have picnics to celebrate their loved ones that passed on. I found the graves to be very interesting. Some of them are even fancy, like this one up ahead you can see here looks like kind of like a house. and. You can look inside and there's like a cross and it's very interesting the ornate decorations in Mexican cemeteries. Being close to the Day of the Dead we actually saw uh, another blogger there her name was Esmeralda Perez and I'll put a link down below and she was doing a photo shoot so we thought that was interesting. We of course walked into the church the inside of the church is very interesting a lot of woodwork inside of the church and that made it nice. And like I said, when you look around the church, you'll see a very interesting cross made out of wood. And it has also a jar shape. Lots of jar shapes figured into the decoration of the church. And I thought that was very interesting. Check out those buttresses over there. Kind of cool, fine buttresses. And then over here, you kind of have a whole view to the city, little town. You hear everything echoing off of you, everything. Quite the view from up here. All this
this up and down reminds me a lot of Guanajuato is what it reminds me of. We just happened to be in town for a festival celebrating the local natives. The local natives of Cuesalan are known as Nahuas. The word Nahua comes from the language they speak, which is Nahuatl. The festival was very lively. They had a full production of Don Quixote in Spanish, and they had their own voladores pole. What was amazing about that pole was it was made the traditional way, which is, means it was all so made local, out of wood. Local voladores, these are different. If you notice here, this is actually made out of wood here. So that's kind of cool. It's an actual wooden one. Looks like they have a little Sunday market going on here. Lots of stuff to see. pig is that is how fresh your pig is around here doesn't get fresher than that over here they're making some tortillas those are what I call fresh tortillas right off doesn't get any fresher than that I got some quesadillas yequemilis Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, you'll give it a thumbs up and maybe a comment. If you want to learn more about the Pueblo Magico of Quetzalan, please visit the blog, and you can read more about it. Thank you for watching. In our next episode, I take you to see a secret movie theater. You won't want to miss that one, so make sure that you're subscribed.